Have you ever seen something you weren't supposed to? Something that made you feel off? Something you regret? Secrets like these are best kept to yourself. But since you're still alive, whatever you saw wasn't nearly as bad as what Peter Holland saw one fateful night in January of 2015. Peter was an unremarkable man, an office worker, slaving away at the daily grind. And like a lot of people, Peter enjoyed nothing more than coming home after a long, hard day, kicking back and watching some TV. It was this innocent activity that led to Peter's horrifying brush with SCP-5049, altering the course of his otherwise average life forever. The event started at around 10.05 p.m. Peter was channel surfing, glued to the couch in his sparsely furnished apartment. Commercials, commercials, commercials as far as Peter's tired eyes could see. He paused for a moment to watch the end of an ad for a car he could never hope to afford on his salary, but something stopped him from changing the channel again. The next ad had begun, and it was playing a strange, scratchy jingle that gave Peter an odd sense of unease. But even stranger than that was the text on screen, Demon Dan's Discount Homunculus Depot in baby blue bubble lettering. He forced a smile. This had to be some weird comedy skit or viral marketing campaign, or maybe it was something he drank. But no, this was a real commercial, and things were about to get even weirder. The Peppy logo faded to a concerning sight. A tall humanoid figure dressed like a used car salesman, but one that definitely wasn't human. His skin was dark green and covered in patches of thick fur. He had long fingers with intimidating claws and a grin full of needle-like fangs. It looked almost demonic. And after a few seconds, the demon began to speak. Hey there, folks, it's your man, Demon Dan, coming at you with the latest and greatest deals from Demon Dan's Discount Homunculus Depot. We've just accepted a shipment of brand new models that would make even the most discerning customers weep with excitement. Let's see what we've got. The creature, apparently named Demon Dan, stepped away from his desk, revealing two long, furry goat legs that ended in large, pointed hooves. Peter now assumed he really was going crazy, but at this point he was along for the ride. Demon Dan continued his pitch. Looking to make your way through the capitalist hellscape that makes home look cozy? Come try one of our newest businessman models! Dan gestured behind him to where Peter was horrified to see a total of 52 adult male human bodies hanging from a wall. There was something uncanny about them. They seemed almost hollow, like a highly realistic costume or a prop from a horror movie. Peter didn't have much time to think about it, though, as Demon Dan went on. If you're looking for an extra challenge of inequality, the businesswoman model may be a right fit for you. The commercial then revealed a wall of human female bodies strung up in a similar fashion. Now, you may be thinking, but Dan, business sounds hard, I just want to have some fun. And the fine team here at Demon Dan's Discount Homunculus Depot have got you covered. The camera zoomed out to show an area of the store filled with children's decorations and more of these strange, hollowed-out human suits in child sizes to match. And who has more fun than kids? No one, that's who. For a limited time, the purchase of any child size unit comes with a complimentary 50% off coupon for parental units. You just can't say no to a deal like that. Before Peter could process the madness that was unfolding before him, the camera cut again. The store's logo appeared on the screen once more, along with several cuts to locations around the store itself. There were more human bodies, hundreds of them. Demon Dan's sleazy voice rang out over all of it. Here at Demon Dan's Discount Homunculus Depot, we know it's not all fun and games. The bravest among us have a mission to accomplish. The Seven Lords are ever planning their invasion after all, so you're looking for function over form. Well, we've got that in spades down here in the Tactical Services Department. You'll be kicking ass in no time when you're wearing the latest models at the best prices. Seven Lords? Invasion? What did any of this mean? Suddenly, the camera was showing him a new room. Red curtains parted, revealing more of these person suits, several bearing a striking resemblance to real human celebrities. He managed to make out Gucci Mane, Avril Lavigne, Paul McCartney, and Britney Spears before Demon Dan's appearance once again drew his attention. I've got a special treat for you. We're happy to announce the VIP lookalike department. 
We all know how difficult the creation of Homunculus is. It's a fine art that takes years of practice. So when a replacement order on VIPs comes in, every detail needs to be perfect. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. But for the right price, you too can look like famous icons from around the globe. The image of celebrity bodies faded from view, and Peter was left looking at the grinning demon Dan standing behind the front desk of his impossible store once more. He said, There you have it, folks! Come on down to Demon Dan's Discount Homunculus Depot! If you're viewing the advertisement, then you've been selected for entry. Please enter the nearest door for instant deals and upgrade those old duds for one of our newest models. What are you waiting for? Come on down! The logo popped up again hovering above some bold text that said, please enter the nearest door. Peter had had enough. He switched off the TV. What a horror show, he thought. They should just warn you before they put short horror films on TV like that. He had no idea they could just slip them in among regular commercials. Surely Demon Dan and his store couldn't be real, right? But as his eyes drifted to the door in his room, he didn't feel quite so certain. Well, there was only one way to find out. Peter got up went over to the door, took a deep breath, and walked through it. Peter Holland was never seen again, not as himself, anyway. The SCP Foundation has long been aware of this sinister transmission, known as SCP-5049-2, and luckily has found ways to prevent it from claiming more victims. The Foundation Television Analysis Department as well as Webcrawler 40Y40, which is the software the Foundation uses to root out anomalous activity online, are always vigilant for signs of Demon Dan's commercial running. Just observing Demon Dan, who is himself classified as SCP-5049-A, and his ads put you in immediate danger, as they can transform any nearby doors into SCP-5049-1s. Those are interdimensional portals that remain active for around 15 minutes after viewing the ad. So then what specifically is SCP-5049? It's the entire pocket dimension known as Demon Dan's Discount Homunculus Depot, a Kettier-class spatial anomaly constantly on the lookout for new human victims, which it transforms into fleshy suits for its demonic clients, which let them blend in around humans. Prior to its discovery by the Foundation, it's likely that Demon Dan and his associates claimed hundreds if not thousands of lives. But sadly, even discovering this anomaly came at a gruesome cost to the Foundation. On February 16th, 2020, the ad played on Safe Storage Warehouse 13's break room television. At the time of the broadcast, four Foundation personnel were present, including security agent William Birkin. Worrying that this was a potential security threat, Agent Birkin investigated the door to a nearby closet. The second he opened it, he was transformed to the storefront of Demon Dan's Discount Homunculus Depot. He saw Demon Dan himself standing at the corner, while four smaller reptilian imps fought over a small flesh suit. Demon Dan scolded them, before turning his attention to Agent Birkin. Tis, 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 you aren't supposed to be here, little man. How naughty. I'm gonna have to have a word with marketing once I'm through with you. Agent Birkin, fearing for his safety, drew his weapon and shot Demon Dan three times. The creature dematerialized, before appearing right next to Agent Birkin and disarming him with a swift chop. The unfortunate security agent was then grabbed by the considerably larger Demon Dan and thrown over Dan's shoulder. We know all of this because Agent Birkin's standard issue Foundation body camera recorded the whole terrifying ordeal. Even as Demon Dan dragged the helpless Birkin back into the twisted workshop behind the store. There, Birkin saw what would soon be his own fate right before his eyes. Dan's minions converting human bodies into fleshy suits for their demon clientele. And this unfortunate security officer was next. Dan gave him over to a pair of large sheep-like demons, and told them to drain, skin, and declaw him. Birkin's video feed finally cut as the demons pulled out their rusty tools and began to work on him. Of course, the SCP Foundation wouldn't take an attack on one of their operatives, inside one of their facilities, no less, lying down. The unfortunate death of William Birkin allowed the Foundation to refine their methods of intercepting the broadcast of Demon Dan's commercials. They even had a new mobile task force, Mobile Strike Force Kappa-11 or the Baphomet Bashers, specifically to deal with Demon Dan and his cronies. They did more than just prevent him from taking new humans, though. 
when the Baphomet Bashers teamed up with an A-class clairvoyant entity to improve their efficiency in predicting future broadcasts. They were able to launch sting operations and arrest 21 different demonic customers for interrogation. This impressive strike back finally gave the Foundation some meaningful leverage over Demon Dan. And through the use of their clairvoyant entity, they were able to call a temporary truce and arrange a meeting with Demon Dan himself. Captain Steiner, an agent of the Foundation External Negotiation Department, was the one to interrogate Demon Dan. They sat across from each other at a table, and Demon Dan was clearly tense, frustrated with the way the Foundation had been messing with his business. All of their sting operations were frightening off his customers. In return for letting him continue his work, the Foundation wanted Dan to turn over all the information on his bosses and customers, allowing the Foundation to track their movements. When Dan was evasive about whether he'd comply, they tried threatening him. Dan laughed them off. Go ahead, take your best shot, little man. There's a dozen more just like me. You won't stop anything. Finally, he was pressured into giving a yes or no answer as to whether he'd willingly collaborate with the Foundation and act as an informant against his kind. When Demon Dan hinted that he may be willing to comply, he began to make a horrifying gurgling noise and gripped his head in pain. He began speaking in Latin in a voice that wasn't his own, as though the seven demon lords he served were speaking through him. They said, You are a fool, Jailer. To think a pathetic morsel such as this could aid you against us. I have allowed you to toil in your own delusions for far too long. You may have taken advantage of Asimodius all those years ago, but you stop nothing. You hinder nothing. You jail and barter to no avail. Your time is coming. And then Demon Dan's head exploded, which obviously prevented him from giving any incriminating information on those he worked for. Whoever the Demon Lords are, they're certainly the secretive type. You may think that this is the end of Demon Dan's Discount Homunculus Depot and of SCP-5049, but soon another ad ran. It advertised the same products and services out of the same store. The only difference was that this time, a different entity was starring in it. Now go check out SCP-2662 Cthulhu and SCP-4000 Taboo for more strange entities from the files of the SCP Foundation.